hoping to be super practical because uh, I ran a lot of it this morning about discipleship um, and it's all good in theory to go, oh yeah, that was cool, I remember like 20% of that. Now it's time to get practical. Um, so tonight it's going to be a little bit interactive. Um, I'm going to uh, share a couple of different tools, um, a different way of um, practicing or implementing now, not by any means the, the Bible or the dictionary of discipling, the Bible is, you can read that. But um, what I'm going to give you is some, some practical ways that might help you either think missionally or have what I call kingdom conversations. Now, I've come away from youth camps and all sorts of different types of things and I'm like, yeah, I'm so keen on Christianity. It'd be so cool to share my faith. And then you get paralysis by analysis and you're like, oh, I don't know what to say. Like, here's a DVD, here's a YouTube link. It's like, <laughs> we default to, and we're not short on resources in our church because there's one thing we've got going for us. But the best resource is you and I. Um, and through the relationship we have. Um, and all you've got friends and you're like, yeah, and I can't, I can't invite them somewhere, like how will they ever know, how can I share? Well, now the pressure is on you. It's not on whether your pastor can pull a good sermon series together or you've got a good DVD series. Um, these are tips and tricks that will help you very quickly and very simply do these things. Now, I'll be very honest with you. I've grown up as an Adventist all my life and we notoriously are not good at this. We have outsourced this. Which means you go, oh, but I'm not a pastor, I'm not a Bible worker, I'm not this, I'm not an elder, I'm not in personal ministries, and we hand pass it to the next guy. Um, but one of the most pivotal things in my journey was at 19 when I led somebody to Christ and watched them like completely break down in tears and give their life to God. It was by far the most ground altering moment in my spiritual journey because I was like, holy moly, this thing works. Um, particularly if you're someone like me who you just bought up as an Adventist and all you've ever had from day one is breast milk and haystack. Like, <laughs> you, if, you, if, you, if you don't, if you don't know, if you've never had a story outside of the, the subculture that we live in, like, you get very concerned when someone says, can you share me your testimony? You're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Or even if you did, or you feel like you've got to go do that to, to be that. So tonight I'm going to give you some practical, really practical things that you can do. Um, let's see if I can get the slides, Jane. Um, here we go. So we covered this morning, what is a disciple? Quick backtrack, what is a disciple? Follow me, and I'll make you this for a minute. Um, there we go. A disciple is following Jesus, head, heart. We looked at that, becoming committed to the mission of Jesus. Now we're going to look at how disciples work. I don't know if the clip is working. There we go. It's not? I'm not, I'm not changing the day. <laughs> <laughs> John is. So if you need mind, you get the next one, John. Oh, yeah, skip that. No one's interested in the summary. Yeah, just skip that as well. <laughs> All right. I just want to talk to you about this. Um, All the bees, the bees. Um, the reason I want to talk about this is I, I'm a big believer um, in if, if you get your bees out of whack, um, you, it doesn't help with connecting with people to Jesus and discipling them and having the conversations that you have. You need to know where people are at right when you're having the conversations that you have. Most of you will be fine. If you're doing life in relationships with people, you'll be very aware of where people are at. Like, you know, like I often say to people that that. In Ad, we've heard the Adventist message and with what it means to be a Christian. There is a priority of truth. Truth has a priority. And I'll tell you that because if you ran into a car accident and someone's in their dying breath, you're not going to tell them about being a vegetarian. You know, because you're not even really going to rush them and go, you know what? You know where you're going after this? To the ground. <laughs> like, that's, that's direct theology. You know, like, like, you, you, you're, not, you're not running through the state of the dead. Nor are you telling them what's in the holy place or the most holy place. You're going straight to where? Salvation. You're going to Jesus. And it's not saying the others aren't important, but there is a priority. Um, and we know that because... Uh, so sometimes the conversations we have, then you know where, where to have those conversations. People need 
need to belong first. People need to feel safe, love, and value in their community, in their koinonia, before they will ever believe. People surrender their life to God when they feel safe to. So when they feel like, I've got a tribe that's going to back me up. They love me for who I am. I'm not perfect. Um, and I, I feel like I can, I can grow my belief. Then people can make that commitment to follow Jesus by being baptized as a disciple. But notice that baptism and believing are a quite an organic type of experience. And in my experience, I will baptize people quite early knowing that they are committed to believing and following Jesus. Because it's not the end of the journey, it's the start. And you'll hear so many people say that at baptism, but they've done 28 Bible studies and the pastor goes, see you later, you're ready to go. Um, it's about, we're talking about discipling here, we're talking about a journey, a life, life journey of faith. So baptism, and then you've got people becoming. Are people growing in spirit and truth? Are they becoming more and more like Jesus? And then the last is their behaviour, by their fruits. Do you know what they are like? Which is, a, if we're really honest, a little bit different to my grandparents' generation and even the baby boomer generation before us who came and they used to put people in stop smoking programs and do all sorts of stuff like that. Now, they're good things, but people have addictions, people have brokenness, and people carry their, some of their brokenness all the way through their life. And if we're real, like someone smoking versus someone who's jealousy or someone with a porn addiction. We never ask if we've got a porn addiction. Like we, 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 certain things we can target because it's obvious. Other things that there's some character stuff that, you know, God needs to work in and chip away at us over time. So behavior is never a great measure of success. It's an indicator, but it's not the best measure. The best measure is that a Christ is working and people are becoming. People are becoming. People are a continuum. How are they journeying? How are they going? They're not the person they want to be, but they're certainly not the person they used to be. And they skip between that. Um, let's see if we get the next slide. There we go. Some of these conversations are important. Um, before we get into some of our activities, I want to highlight a couple of different spaces for you. Some of you, um, when I've chatted to you, you'll be like, oh, you know, what happens in, you know, we've got certain dynamics, or why have a conversation here, but do I have it there, or do I have it in a different space, or, you know, I want to disciple my friends, but is this the Sabbath school the right place, or do I do a Friday night program, or do I... Um, and this is uh, generally the guide that I, I like to use, and the missiologists who like to use. They have anywhere from the groups of two to four that have what they call an intimate space where you can be completely vulnerable. And if you're really honest, maybe you only have two to four people that you will call, and they'll give it straight to you, and you can be dead set, you can be honest, to the T. And they, no matter what the language is, you will be straight and they'll listen to you and they'll take it. When you get to the 5 to 12, that personal space is now focusing on accountability. So that's usually a small group size. That's where you're growing together, you're honest, you're checking in at each other. You're not probably vomiting everything out of your small group, otherwise everyone's like, oh man, there's this person coming in. But you're, you're able to check in and see how people are going. By the time you get to 20 to 50, in, in, in a dynamic group, you become what we call the, um, the focus is on availability. It's the social space. You've got enough people that they can fairly fit in your house, um, but then you start to struggle to be able to connect with everybody. You're starting to hit your connection max. So it's no longer a small group anymore. You're starting to feel those pains. You're like, well, people are not going deep anymore. People are just trying to connect one another. And then the last one, when you hit 70 plus, you have the focus is on visibility. And usually with those types of things from 20, that 20 to 50 to 70 zone is where the relationships die down because the focus becomes on the stage. Um, and that's where people are vulnerable, that's where people are sharing and it's become stage orientated where you're looking and a small group of people are sharing with the wider masses. But that's, those are often some of the ways to think about space and the groups that you have. Um, because, yeah, you're not going to get vulnerable and real with 50 people. They're just going to look at you and go, uh, you need to see a counsellor. Like, but two to four people over a cup of coffee, they'll be able to listen to you, care, and talk, talk to you about it. So I hope that makes sense as you're looking at it. So, why make disciples? Well, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21, we are ambassadors for Christ. We represent Him, but not only are we ambassadors, we are new creations in Christ. We come along, God does something new in us, 
and then we take on a new representation. We now represent him. It's part of our identity. So, what are you? I'm a disciple. I'm an ambassador. I'm a follower of Jesus. I represent him. That, that's, a, that's the core markers of a Christian identity. And so, I want to talk to you about four different fields. Um, we have the go field, the gospel field, the grow field, and the gather field. And in between it is the guide, the guide, the work of the leader. And so we're going to look at that, and in between each of these segments, we're going to have a couple different tools and aspects that you can look at. Um, so a field, if you want to be horny, it's a friendship group, it's, it's some type of, it's uni, it's a family, it could be a church, it could be your neighbours, it could be your um, tennis group, it could be what, whoever you're trying to connect with, um, where are they at on that journey. Um, so as you enter into the field, um, you're going to be at different stages with different people. Um, whether it's the awkward, like, you're going to have to admit that you're actually a Christian, uh, or you are a Christian, and it's like, well, you're waiting for the questions to come, like, why did my dad die of cancer? And, you know, you're getting ready for those types of things. So, and wherever you are on that journey, it's, it's important that it's helpful to know where you are with people. Um, when you're in the go stage of making disciples, um, it's all about... It's all about getting into a good rhythm. It's a good rhythm. You're looking for a person of peace, and we're going to come and look at that in a second. Um, I'm a big believer in having a blessed strategy. And the blessed strategy is simply this. Just begin. Don't have paralysis by analysis. Don't be like, oh, I'm so good at you. It's like, oh, I should I do it off? Like, just go. Just have a missional posture every day. Wake up, say, Lord, I'm going to uni. Who am I eating with today? Like, who am I going to connect with? Um, listen, listen to the Spirit, um, as He guides, and I love this one, and I know I haven't met anyone who doesn't like this one, eat. Everybody eats, after two to three, some people four, five plus meals a day, um, select your, like, be intentional with your meals. So say, hey, I'm going to, you know, do us going to go with zero G's, I'm going to on a Tuesday night, text a few people and say, hey, burrito bowl on me, let's go, and connect. Find ways that you're going to eat anyway. And the old saying is, food opens mouths, mouths open conversations. Um, and people will chat. So use your eating as your best opportunity to do that. If you've got a youth leader with you, pastor, you can usually spin it up and like with your own flow and we'll put the bill if you're eating with people intentionally to make disciples. Because eating is so ingrained in discipleship. Um, serve, go find ways to serve, get involved, connect. And then know the gospel story. And we're going to look at that uh, tonight. Know the gospel story. Now, you hear that, how do you know the story? No, I'm like, no, no. Now we're going to talk about how to tell it. Tell it quickly, efficiently, and effectively so people can understand it. Always begin with prayer. And I'm going to talk to you about the Oikos map in a second. And then there's some conversation guides. Ways to have conversation. Now, I'm not saying open up a guide and say, hi, oh, my name is like, I'm just ways to give you some insight um, as why like you're going to talk and lead someone through um, to believe in Jesus. So I want to talk to you about a person of peace. Pat, in this morning I talked about Pat is our person of peace. Persons of peace are important. Um, there are people who are yet, aren't yet committed disciples of Jesus, but God seems to have prepared them in advance. And you know them because they are by nature receptive, like they listen to you, and they don't think you're a fruitcake. Um, you, they have good reputation, they have, they have a reputation, whether good or bad, within the community, and they are known as gatekeepers, so they can refer people to you. They can refer people to you. These people are responsive to you and Jesus in you. And you'll meet them. I've got another one who's a work colleague of mine who's not an Adventist and works in Adventist school, and she is the gatekeeper and the person of peace for the whole of touch football on the Sunshine Coast. And I play three games of touch football a week, and through that, I've become the unofficial chaplain of the Touch Football Club. Because they know if something dies, someone has needs help, uh, they've got someone who's a pastor who happens to play Touch Football. And, uh, uh, but through the relationship I have with her, it's opened up a channel of network. And you know that, that's the old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So these are people that get you into the door and you play off their street prayer to get you in. And they're like, oh, I'm friends with someone saying, oh, you're going to look into the party. Well, when you meet a person of peace, you have what we call um, a perception. Um, and there's two different types of relationships you can have with a person of peace. You can have a 
temporary relationship and a permanent relationship? Well, the word here is actually passing. So let's talk about if it's a passing person. So, for instance, you're sitting on the train, you're rolling into Melbourne Uni, you meet somebody, and in a passing conversation, they're like, so you're a Christian, hey, because I see you're reading, you know, some Christian book or you listen to a podcast and they put it on your phone and you're like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm just trying to have a bit of worship before I go to uni. Um, and then they put a question to you, and all there's an opportunity for you to share Jesus. Usually, because it's a passing interaction, Unless you can get their number, unless you can find a way to continue a relationship with them, it's a passing interaction, you're usually going to take the opportunity to proclaim. And proclaim that it's the simple way to just share Jesus and just share what he's done in your life. And with that, you're using the Holy Spirit's power to speak that. And some of us may have ever experienced that with somebody in you know why it said something to you and it was powerful, it was spirit led, and you don't know where they came from. But the other angle of this perception is what happens when you meet somebody in a permanent relationship with them. Uh, you're now operating less off for a claim but more off presence. You're in their life. When, when I'm not going anywhere, I'm here for the next 10 years playing touch footy with you. So I'm not necessarily jumping in for a straight away to go, oh, my name's Lachlan, have you met Jesus? Like, you, you're going... By playing every Tuesday night for the next 12 months, hopefully you see that I don't swear at the ref, I treat, I carry myself in a different way, then you're going to ask questions. Do you see the difference? One is when you're sharing, the other is when they're picking up the vibes, picking up what you're putting down, going, wow, um, there's something different about you. And you're preparing people. So the focus is not necessarily on directly sharing, it's the way you are living that is coming out like that. And so the person to the piece, um, open up opportunities for you to either proclaim or have presence within a community. So to proclaim or have presence in a community. So that's the first piece. Um, let's, I went through that as well, uh, plenty of eating. This is an Oikos map. This is an Oikos map. This is something that missional communities use as they pray for people. Um, and when you come into a relational network, which is like a gathering of people, friends, say, you end up meeting, who do we got there? Me, you meet Sam. And Sam is the person of peace, and Sam is like, you know, hey, did you join our basketball team? And you're like, yeah, I'd love to. He's like, yeah, yeah, come, come join it. And then you meet Troy, Ben, Dylan, Daniel, all on one night, they're like, yeah, let's get a pizza afterwards. And you're like, yeah, let's get a pizza. And then suddenly, you got a new ball in crew, and you're having pizza with them. But it's because Sam invited you, and Sam's like, oh, you've got a way, you can come here Friday nights because he goes to some church and he's like, yeah, he's a cool dude. Suddenly, Sam's passion is credit for you, and you now have four to five other blokes who are now going to be like, what did you do on Friday night? Like, you know, what are you about? Like, tell me more of your story. Um, and what you talking about is where you network and you look at the relational streams. You're like, oh, Sam introduced me to Daniel, Ben, Joe, and Troy. And you write that down, and you can pray for people. Um, some people will even put crosses next to them when they've given their life to Christ and then put a wave when they're baptized, not when they learn to surf, but when, when, when they're baptized. Um, and it's a way for praying through relationships. Now, if you're anything like me, I'm 100% honest, most of my prayers end up being about me. So I go, oh, Lord, you've got this, you've got this, you've got this. And then I'm like, you know, I need to learn to pray for other people. Other people have got it worse most of the time. But, you know, praying for other people. This is a great way for intentionally going, you know what, I've got so-and-so that I'm hanging out with and they're introducing me to their sister and different things like this. I'm going to pray for them. And you write it down. And it's actually a great way to journal. It's a great way to go around and actually see how God has worked in their lives. And you can see the networks. It's also great when you lose track of people. And you know what has happened? You're like, I haven't texted that person in months. Like, I haven't talked to so-and-so. You go through the voice box journal. You look at it and you're like, oh man, I'm going to change the deal and thank you. I'm going to send a message. Let's connect. Like, great way to keep um, accountable and keeping up to date with people. Um, this is a conversation guide tool as well. Um, sometimes conversations are casual, the everyday conversations be attended to the way people look might be seen. Sometimes you have conversations that then step beyond casual and they become meaningful. 
Um, they're like, so they're a question about a topic of conversation to take the discussion deeper. And that's where you take the shift as, as a Christian in the room. You're now going to listen more than you talk. The art of asking a good question and just say, okay, so tell me about that loss or that pain. That would have been difficult if you hadn't experienced And then you sit back and listen. And out of that conversation, the person seems not interested. That's okay. You can respect their boundaries. But if that conversation, that meaningful conversation grows, it opens up the opportunity for something spiritual. So you're like, oh, man. That would have been tough losing your dad at a young age. Like, thanks to Jerry. Like, do you question God in any way? And then you're into a spiritual one. Like, oh, God. Like, well, we never really knew about God when we were growing up. And then, lo and behold, you're asking something that's meaningful to spiritual. But if you watch on Netflix, and they're like, oh, yeah, we've been busy and this and that. Oh, we just thought it was about that. And then, like, oh, God. You know? Thank you. 
call and, and share. Share the two things again. Thank you. 
you go from there. So, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you five or so minutes to practice this, to have a go, have a go at three circles, to follow that picture and do your best. And I, I'm going to give you, I'm actually going to give you three minutes. I'm going to time it and give you a go at drawing it and sharing it with the person next to you. So I'll give you one three minute go and then I'll put another timer on and then the other person can have a go. So just, just for fun, give them in and have a go and try in three circles to share the story of the gospel. So the first person is going to go first and you'll care. Alright? First person is going to go first and you'll care. Thank you. 
get up and walk, and the man got up and walked, and when people got angry at Jesus, he did it on something called the Sabbath. I don't know what that is, but you know. And you get them to retell the story. And then you go, all right, anything new or surprising in the story that you read? Which you might have noticed the question we shared last night. Uh, last night. What's new and surprising? Yeah. Emojis, you don't have to go full emojis, but like symbols. 
and we're going to play Simple Bingo. Because I've got a bingo of symbols after, and I'm going to see how many symbols you can come up with from this passage. Oh, let's go. I'm going to give you five minutes to read through it. You can do it as a group. Um, come up with symbols together. You might want to draw them out. Here we go. We're going to measure how many you got.
he's got an amazing Daniel 2 Bible study and things like this. Whoa, what is that? Yeah, there's things like that will happen in the future. But sometimes it's just sitting down, having some cake, and getting to know the person that makes more of an impact. Because the Daniel 2 obviously didn't get home to this guy, but a slice of cake went a long way. So my point is, don't freak out and go, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. I'm not a pastor, I don't know if you're a Bible course. Yeah, you just cook them a cake. Cook them a cake and sit down and eat, get to know them, and share what you do know. And look, if you're botching, you're better botching and having a go than sitting around and just never doing anything because you've never known how, never got enough training. The conference didn't do this for you. Just go, just do it. Like, have some text with your friends and share your testimony. Again, no one's going to argue. But that I learned from that lesson that, you know, cake is important to ministry. And um, that, you know, eating and getting to know people is foundational for them to get to know who Jesus is. That whole saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And we know a lot of stuff, but it's do we know it in relationships? And do they see it in our koinonia? Do they see it in our community? Do they see it in the way we love people? Um, and then, man, we've got a game-changing message that get, will go along with that relationship and make the changes. So anyway, 15 seconds to make it through, so it's going to be a party of trivia tonight. No, I'm joking. You're okay. No, I'm joking. Let's pray. We'll finish up tonight. Father in heaven, thanks for the opportunity to be interactive tonight and look at some practical tools and ways to share faith, to share your love. Thank you for the fact that we, we can find ways to recapture what it was like in that early church that was so filled up, that was so life-giving and filled with community. Um, I was a taste what that would have been like. But, Lord, give us opportunities where we're cooking cake for people, having a Bible study, whether it's just a 15-second testimony or it's connecting with someone who's an influencer or a person of peace. Just help us to be aware, literally aware each and every day of the opportunities you put in front of us so that we won't waste for that um, and we'll have opportunity to see people in the kingdom. Um, thank you for making such an impact in all of our lives and thank you for the gospel. Particularly on Easter weekend, may we find ways to simply 